welcome back to my channel. I recently, in my January wrap up, uh, read the book Tsume to Me by Fujino Kaori. And I mentioned that I read this because it's an Akutagawa Prize winner. And I've, managed, I've mentioned this prize several times on my channel, and I thought I would finally walk you through what the Akutagawa Prize is, why it's significant, and basically the effect it has on the Japanese publishing industry as well as interest, introducing many books that have been prize winners. So just to start off with what the Akutagawa Prize, it was established in 1935, so it's very old and um, because of that it's also very, very highly, highly respected. And it's basically now, in its current version, it is given twice a year, uh, once in January and once in June. And it's given concurrently um, with the Naoki Prize, which is another highly respected uh, literature prize. Although, in terms of translation, the Akutagawa Prize is much more heavily translated than the Naoki Prize is. Now, I want to tell you what the difference is, so to make sure I don't make a mistake, because it's very easy to make a mistake with these. Let me look at um, what's written in front of me. So, the Akutagawa Prize is given to the best serious literary story published in a newspaper or magazine okay so um books in japan are serialized so they're published in uh like literary magazines and that's how um and they're put together and then they're published in a final format and that's how authors pretty pretty much go out in the spotlight it's still that part of the the side that part of the publishing industry i'm still not very familiar with um because for me the idea of reading a book in serialized form is not as appealing i'd rather just have the the book in its um as a finished product um but in general that's how the japanese publishing industry works now as i mentioned this is given concurrently uh with the naoki prize and now Nao naoki prize is um the best work of popular literature in any format by a new rising or reasonably young established author so akutagawa prize is definitely what we would term serious literature so it goes on very heavy heavy social aspects has some uh, social commentary on japanese issues along with having a, a very sense a very heavy sense of literariness basically and it's given to a new or given to a rising author. So maybe someone who has already kind of published something, but um, is still very young in their career. Um, unlike the Naoki Prize, which again is popular format. So they're both given to new and recently new uh, young authors, but one is definitely serious literature versus popular literature. Um, and for that, for me, the Akutagawa Prize is, is, is definitely fascinating because that's the part where I get to really see this, the social commentary on Japanese uh, everyday life that I don't really get to talk to people about. Like, people are aware it exists, but they're almost too afraid to put it into words. And I think with the, Akuta, like the books that have won Akuta, the Akutagawa Prize, you're able to um really just delve into those matters um as far as akutagawa the um the 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 type the name of the prize i'm not very doing very well at introducing this uh the name of the prize is from ryu nosuke akutagawa who is a very very famous classic uh japanese author that everyone should read because he's famous i would compare him to like Borges, basically um in terms of not in terms of like the sort of the mania behind the writing but in terms of like the emotion behind the writing and the the, the detail behind the writing i would compare them to borges um but yeah so that's where the akutagawa prize comes from um in terms of prize money um uh, they get a pocket watch and they get a million dollars not a million dollars it would be nice if they got a million dollars they get a million yen which is in current uh exchange rate is about like 8700 us dollars so Good prize, not that much, although I don't know what the foreign uh, prizes give but um, for prize money, but I don't know, $8,700, I guess it's fine. 
Um, in any case, in any case, um, it is possible for um, the prize not to be given. Uh, there have been been many many gap years uh, in the past. Although the current trend um, these days, so back in the past, if they were debating between two authors. Um, they would just not give the prize at all because it'd be too close to choose a winner. While these days it's gotten to become more of a trend to, if there is such a close uh, tie between two authors, just to give the prize to both authors. So there have been a few split prizes in um, recent editions of the, of the Akutagawa Prize. So the first prize winner was in 1935 and that was Tatsuzo Ishikawa's book called Sobo. And I have to admit, I don't know what that title means. I, I it's the first time I see the kanji to that to that to to that, whatever this word is. I've never seen this before. I don't know who the author is, so I could not say what this book is about. It definitely has not been translated, um, but I'd be very curious to see what it is. But yeah, I have no idea. Um, the latest winner from 2021 uh, for the 166th Akutagawa Prize was uh, Bunji Sunagawa's Black box which one's um oh no actually i looked that one up and it seems to be a book talking about uh japan within its current within this current coronavirus um pandemic situation um as far as i could tell from the brief synopsis it's about a delivery like messenger person in the society and how he's coping and whatnot so that one could be very very interesting but in any case when it comes to the kutagawa prize it is very much highly highly translated and even if it's not the Akutagawa prize winning book that is translated these authors are highly translated into foreign languages so for uh books that i own so basically i have a lot of i've read and own quite a few books of the actual Akutagawa prize winning book and then i've read and own books from the authors and I split them into two different piles because of that. So I'm going to introduce you first to the books that I own that are actual that contain the actual Akutagawa prize winning book or novella since a lot of these are actually just like really really long short stories. Um, but yeah the first one that I have is uh, was the winner of the 25th Akutagawa prize and that is Kobo Abe who won in 1951. Um, for the story the crime of s karuma which actually this says kabe this uh, is actually a collection of his stories uh called the wall and the uh, story of s karuma is like the very first story in this book which i actually have not read yet because i'm not sure if i can read this level but i'll have to find out um but uh, Abe Kobo is one of my favorite authors. If you're not aware, he is obviously stunning. The Boxman and The Face of Another, uh, Woman in the Dunes, everything must, must, highly recommended. Um, the next is Kinsaburo Oe, uh, Prize Doc, of which um, I have one of his representative books. This book is amazing. But the Akutagawa Prize winning book that, um, or the book that got him the, the prize in 1958 is called prize winner or shiku in Japanese um, and that book is absolutely or rather it's a very it's a very it's, it's quite short actually it's it's pretty much a short story but that was absolutely amazing it is about a black American soldier who has been taken uh, prison prisoner by uh, a group of Japanese villagers when his um, when after escaping from a plane by via parachute he lands in the middle of this village and so obviously things don't go very well but that story is absolutely stunning and can, this is also absolutely stunning so Kinsaburo Oe is just one of the is one of the like great Japanese authors um, that's ever been and um, he started off with the Akutagawa Prize oh um, by the way he's a Nobel Prize winner now so just just putting that out there uh, next that I have is uh, Ryu Murakami's Almost Transparent Blue. Um, I have read that one in the original Japanese, but my copy of it is in the in um, the U.S. Um, but again, like he's uh, this is his audition. Um, recently on this channel, I read In the Miso Soup, uh, but his book From the Fatherland with Love was awesome, was really pretty much awesome. Like Ryu Murakami is absolutely fantastic. Love him. He's very gritty, very noir, and he has such like creativity with his books that he really 
he keeps that very dark noir um you know deepest part of human emotions as like a constant theme but his books are very very different from one another so absolutely amazing um i have um uh, the winner in 1993, Hikaru Okuizumi's means The Stones Cry Out, which is an absolutely beautiful story, um, a father and son story, um, a post-war story about father and son. That is absolutely beautiful. Stunning, stunning, stunning. Definitely a must read. Um, Snakes and Earrings by Hitomi Kanehara, so Hibi ni Piyasu. Um, this is explores the underground of Japan, the underground of like the tattoo world, the piercing world, uh, deals with BDSM, masochism, um, just basically like misdirected and very lost youth of Japan and this part of Japan that like Japan just doesn't really want and doesn't really want to be, um, doesn't want this world to be a representation of Japan. So this was an amazing exploration of that book and it's been translated into English and it's also been a movie. Uh, another example would be um, Breasts and Eggs, which is the very popular book um, on basically going around um, the English speaking world because of its recent translation. Although the translation of Breasts and Eggs in the English version is not the Akutagawa prize winning version of Breasts and Eggs, it's actually a sort of um, republication, uh, rewrite um, of her uh, Kawakami Miyako's uh, summer story, uh, uh, yeah, Natsumo no Gatari. And so, you're, you're, if you read Breasts and Eggs in English, you are reading an Akutagawa Prize winner, but you're not reading the Akutagawa Prize winning book, even though it shares the same title as the Akutagawa Prize winning book just to let you know. But um, yeah, Kawakami Miyako, huge, um, huge writer in Japan. Um, another one, um, the one that I just read in, in, in January, it's Sumitome by Fujino Kaori, which is deals with Japanese social issues, but using the literary genre of horror. And it just, I mean, you can watch my January wrap up for 2022. And it's just absolutely, this book really just, I was overcome by it. It was just crazy, ridiculous, unbelievable. Um, and I just can't believe someone would write this, but it makes so much sense. And it was definitely worth, uh, worth winning the prize, on, although it's not been translated into any other language as of yet. But yeah, Tsumitome, um, that one won in 2013 and then later in 2013 one of my favorite books is called The Whole Ana by Hiroko Okamada uh, sorry Oyamada and yeah this is The Whole uh, you should also she also which has been translated into English along with her other book The Factory um, and just absolutely wonderful wonderful writer who really just takes a very surreal fantasy look at social issues in Japan that just absolutely absolutely wonderful love this author um, can't praise this highly enough. Um, another book um, available in English, uh, Tomo, the 2014 winner, Tomaka Shibasaki, who wrote Spring Garden, who kind of looks at architecture in Japan and how it um, has sort of, um, it just talks about like the transience of people in a big city, how there, things are there at one moment and they're not there in the other moment. So this was, an, again, um, translated Akutagawa Prize winner. Um, next you have an untranslated book, the 2015 winner. It's a book I own um, by Yukiko Motoya. And this is a book, I do not know how to read this. It is called Irui Konin Tan. I don't know, my Japanese friends can't read this title either. I, um, I have not read this yet, but it, and I don't remember what it's about because I bought it a few years ago, but it definitely sounded excited when I bought it. But yeah, just an example of um, an Akutagawa Prize winner that has not yet been translated. Next, the very, very famous 2016 winner, Konbini Ningen, or as known in English, convenience store woman, about a woman who works in a convenience store in Japan, and basically her going, her accepting the fact that what is considered monotony to uh, the regular Japanese society to her is a very comforting place. It's a place she wants to be, and she's trying to, she's struggling against 
um, a Japanese society that is trying to force her to become more normal, basically. But absolutely, absolutely adore this book, Konbini Ningen, Convenience Store Woman, absolutely um, deserving of winning the Akutagawa Prize. And then one of the later books that I have, although this one I have not finished reading yet, that is Murasaki no Skato no Onna by Imamura Natsuko, so The Woman in the Purple Skirt, also very popular on booktube these days. Um, because it was translated into English, I think about two years ago, or or just last year, it was published, perhaps. Um, but yeah, just so you can see that, and and this is just a a, um, a small um, selection uh, of the books that the Akutagawa Prize winning books that I actually own. But there's so much more. So for example, um, here are are a stacks of authors. Um, I either have read or have owned, and they are all Akutagawa Prize winning um, authors, although the books that I'm representing are not the Akutagawa Prize winning book, but books that have been translated um, because the Akutagawa Prize gave them this prestige and gave this, this re them gave them this reputation um, that has led them to be uh, come out in translation. So for example, one of my favorite authors, Yasushi Inoue, um, I've recommended him a few times, although this book that I'm holding, that's called Shirobamba, although it has been translated into French, although not into English. Um, but his other shorter books have definitely been translated, um, including the Akutagawa Prize winning one in 1949 called Bullfight. Um, Togyu is the, the, the title in Japanese, but Bullfight. Um, I mean, Yasushi is one of my favorite authors in Japanese, and um, he just writes really beautiful, like, I mean, well, Shirobamba is very much about um, the little, like, living in the little villages, and it's just about being with your family in the outskirts of Japan, and just really, really beautiful book. Um, another example would be Seicho Matsumoto, 1952, who writes mystery books. Um, so you can see there's, like, a, a huge literary range. I mean, I've, I've described um, uh, women's fiction, there's been horror, there's been mystery, I've mentioned um, surrealist, like modernist kind of books, books that are definitely a lot more met, me what would be considered meta. Some books um, <clears throat> that really dive with the Japanese psyche, whether it's the dark underground or whether it's the more current, like working in a convenience store. There's such a big, big mix. There's such a literary mix in the Kutagawa Prize winner. So every winner has been very different from the previous winner. So. That's what I love about the Kutagawa Prize because there's not really a formula. Like, I know people have gotten very much disappointed with foreign literary prizes because it seems like it's always the same kind of book winning that you have to hit a sort of formula to be able to win, but not with the Kutagawa Prize winner. They're very, very diverse books. Um, to continue though, Shusaku Endo, the very famous, one of the great literary, literary greats in Japan, Shusaku Endo. Um, he won in 1955, although it's a book I have not read read yet, and I'm not sure it's been translated. I can't I can't say for certain, but it's called White Man. Here I have his book Scandal to represent um, Shusaku Endo, but he's absolutely amazing. His best books are his books where he explores uh, religion and the effect of religion on Japanese society, uh, most particularly uh, Christianity, although my favorite book still stands at this moment to be Sea and Poison which I'm not even gonna say what it's about because it's too beautiful and I feel like any word about that book just could spoil the beauty of and harshness and darkness and the lyricism of the book and it's absolutely stunning. But yeah, Shusaku Indo, Shusaku Indo, there's a reason he won. He started off strong <clears throat> and he continues strong and he's just amazing. Another example of a, a, a prize winner that I've read um, Keizo Hino, he won for his book called Ano Yuhi, so that evening, yeah, that evening in 1974, this is his book Eye of Dreams, Eye of Dreams, which I read last year. Uh, 1983 winner, Nobuko Takagi, <clears throat> I have read uh, her book Translucent Tree, uh, I read that about maybe like 10 years I mean, no I was in I was living in Colorado so around 2009 is when I read that read that book and let me get a drink because my no, my throat is dead um but that book is basically kind of like a more romance side kind of book so again the literary genre just it spans all genres 
but that one definitely is a lot stronger of a, a of a romance book. Admittedly, I don't remember it very well because I read it so long ago. I feel like it's still worth reading from my recollection, recollection but I can't give a hundred percent like strong recommendation behind it but if you're interested you can go check it out as far as I know though that's the only book that's ever been published and I've never really met anyone else that's read that book but yeah it's called Translucent Tree by Nobuko Takagi, Takagi. Um, and next a very popular uh, author Yoko Tawada uh, she won in 1992 for the book that's called The Bridegroom Was a Dog um, this is the book, The Last Children of Tokyo, that also goes by the other title, The Emissary, and The Emissary is now the much more popular title of this book. Um, but this is a dystopian book. So there you go, a dystopian book that really de delves with the issues of, you know, Japan becoming a very um, elderly, heavy uh, country where there's not enough youth to keep the country of Japan afloat. For me, that this book is very excellent plot it's not the greatest execution but still very excellent author and i'm definitely very curious to read um the akutagawa prize winning books um risa wataya is another really uh, a new find for me but i looked her up on the internet and i discovered that she had won the akutagawa prize and i was obviously shocked but it made so much sense um this particular book is called pauvre chose uh which the Japanese title is Kawaii Soudane. Yeah, Kawaii Soudane is the Japanese title for this book. Um, and then in French it was translated as you, like, you poor thing, basically. And this explores like Japan versus Japanese American, like Japanese versus Japanese American, and the uh, cultural differences between uh, two people who seem to look alike and seem to come from the same culture, but because one was raised abroad, there's been a huge shift in sort of um, a way of thinking and the way of approaching things and doing things and just how you approach relationships and whatnot. So very, very clever. And she won um, for the book I Want to Kick You in the Back called Kimuri Kimuritai Senaka in Japanese, which I actually just looked at the bookstore and I think I might be picking it up quite soon, uh, at least to purchase. I don't know about reading, but at least to purchase. But it's like, it's just, I really liked this book that I just read and I'm very excited to read more from her. Uh, another example of a, 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 a Akutagawa Prize winner, um, Fuminori Nakamura, who is coming out with a brand new translation in English very soon this year. Um, I read in January uh, this book called L'hiver dernier je me suis séparé de toi, which means last winter we parted. This book is in translated into English, although his uh, prize winning book is called Hibi, uh, sorry, next, that, not that one. It's called The Boy in the Earth. And this guy is a thriller writer, or at least this is a thrill, uh, basically a thriller writer. So once again, very, very varied um, genre within the Akutagawa Prize winners. So very, very excited about that one, or I, I enjoyed that one. It's not my favorite. It was fun. I kind of, I did kind of dislike, it's like a dislike-like kind of thing. Like I appreciated what he did, but for me, I was just like, mmm. But um, still, Akutagawa Prize winner, and if you like that, I mean, the guy writes really, really well. Uh, next, uh, a child, not a childhood favorite, a, um, what's it called when people really like, that, that people get that feeling when they're like, ooh, like comfort favorite? I don't know, there's, there's a word I'm looking for, but I can't find it. Um, but that is Kawakami Hiromi, or Hi Hiromi Kawakami who uh, won for the book Hibi Ofume, which once again, I was at the bookstore yesterday and I almost picked it up because it looks really interesting. Um, this is her book, Soudain J'ai Entendu La Voix de l'eau. Uh, suddenly I Heard the Sound of Water, um, which the, the, the Japanese title, title is called Suise. Uh, so not a direct translation in the Japanese. Um, but yeah, like Kawakami Hiromi, many books have been translated into English uh, by this author. Um, and definitely uh, a must pick up. Another author you should probably recognize is Yu Miri, who won in 1996. Uh, her book, Tokyo Ueno Station, uh, won the, well, basically the translator, Morgan Giles, won a prize for translating this book, Tokyo Ueno Station. So he definitely made the rounds around the literary uh, community. And Yu Miri was actually in, uh, won um, the Akutagawa Prize in 1996 for her book, Kazuku 
cinema, so family cinema, which has not been translated of, of, as of yet, but because, but perhaps because of the influence of this book, we can maybe see that title in the future. So it's very, very super exciting. And what's really, really great is that like, you have such, as again, you have such diversity. So for example, um, there was one year, it was in 2004, where two women won the prize. And it was the first time that two women had won the prize. And they were also the youngest winners. And once again, that goes to Wataya Risa Wataya, who was only 19 years old when she won for her book. And then you also have, um, oh, which one? Uh, snakes and Earrings, Snakes and Earrings. Snakes and Earrings, Kanehara Hitome, he was only 20 years, 20 years old. And they were the youngest writers um, who also happened to be female that had um, only, that had been previously, um, what am I trying to say? The only, the, the youngest authors in the Kutagawa Prize winning history to win the prize um, at 19 and 20, and all the other authors had been male and like 23 years old. So not only they were female, but they were also uh, very young is what I'm trying to say. But then you, in 2013, you have Natsuko Kuroda, who as far as I know has not been translated. She won the Akutagawa Prize at the age of 75, um, just because she basically had her debut at the age of 75. Um, so it just shows like, like this, this is just why I love the Akutagawa Prize and I'm so excited about it. It's because there's such diversity again in, in the literary genres, the literary styles, the social issues at, pl at play, whether it's a father who doesn't know if, if he wants to keep his child who's going to become handicapped, um, a, a woman who is attracted to a man who has a, his tongue is split down the middle and she's really um, throws herself in this world of you know sadomasochism you have japanese japanese american relations you have the um plight of the homeless right before the olympics in the tokyo uh you have books uh, books by um you know the, the transience of people in tokyo and the transience of things in tokyo like there's just so much diversity and there's such a good mix in the kutagawa prize that is it definitely 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 a prize that you should be following um, and because of that there's so much that that I've said in this video I don't know if I'll be able to put it in the description box below but I will but I did basically get my information um, and my data from the um, Wikipedia article of for the Akutagawa prize I think that describes exactly what you need to know perfectly well you don't really need to go out more than that um, and I'll definitely link that video so you can basically get the names of all the authors that have won, the names of the, the, the books that have won both in English, if there's an English translation, and within the original, and with the original Japanese title. So I'll definitely link that below. In any case, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned a little bit about the Akutaba Prize. I hope I was really able to express my excitement for this prize because for me, like, every time I go to the bookstore and I pick up a book that looks exciting, it's, I always, end up remarking that it's either an Akutagawa Prize winner or it was nominated for the Akutagawa Prize. Like those books without fail can't, st I just, I, they just, they just excite me so much. Like yesterday I went and picked up a book, um, totally by random. I just grabbed it off the shelf. It wasn't, it was just, um, books are published within, um, well they're organized in within like fiction books are organized within the, the, the publisher in Japanese bookstores. And so it's it's not like you can go to the romance section and pick a romance book, go to a short, short story collection section and buy, you know, get a short story collection. Everything is mixed together. And I just randomly picked up a book and it was an Akutagawa Prize winner from the very first um, non-Japanese person to win the Akutagawa Prize winner. It was a Taiwanese author. And they were basically writing about um, the lead up uh, to the Winter Olympics in uh, Beijing. So super exciting. Um, I can't buy any books right now, but it's definitely on my wish list of uh, future books I'd like to read. So yeah, I just, we're just going to have to end there because I, I can keep talking about the Akutawa Prize all day. But once again, yeah, thank you so much for watching and I really hope you learned a lot and I will see you in my next video. Bye!